Hey guys, Timmy Chuck here, and welcome to this overview of the 8020 Activity Planner. Um, in this video, I want to go through what you can see in front of you, which is an exercise. We're going to be looking at how you spend your time through the lens of, you've probably heard of uh, Pareto's Law, the 8020 Law, um, and it applies to all kinds of uh, different examples in nature and in the real world. For example, um, roughly, if you look at your average city, 20% of the roadways carry 80% of the traffic, so that's one concrete example. 20% um, of your clients generate roughly 80% of your sales. So it's it's plus or minus, it's part art, part science, but you'll see that this does, uh, in a weird way, hold true in a lot of different applications. So we're going to use this, and we're going to look at your work week, and with this uh, activity planner here, you're going to be plugging in how many hours you work on average each week, and we're going to talk through this. But before we jump into this, I want to talk real quickly about three concepts with you to really drive home this point and what we're really ultimately going for at the end of the day. So if you own a business, if you're leading a business and you are starting to bump your head against the growth ceiling, what we're looking at here, you can see phase one, phase two growth, where this is a startup. This is when a business starts out, your first few clients, your first few transactions, your first few team members, and things work well until they don't. Things start to get a little bit complicated. As we start to uh, grow our team out, we start to have more transactions and clients, and then we can really handle and we start to feel this this real um, bottleneck throughout our business. This is called the growth ceiling, and uh, what, what got you here to phase one is not what's going to be the same strategy that's going to get you to phase two. So one of the things that we need to look at is how the, the leaders or the entrepreneur are spending their time. Because if they're spending their time in the wrong areas, we're going to get diminishing returns. So one of the critical areas is, is first looking at what are the types of things that you're doing? What are the types of things that you should be doing? What are the types of things that you should not be doing? And if we get this right, we're going to accelerate our business's growth uh, with confidence from phase one into phase two. Um, the other concept I want to share with you here is your, your rate of progress. One of the equalizers in terms of uh, what we all have and share in common is 24 hours in a day. We all have it. And there are uh, a couple different ways that we can leverage the time that we have to get more results. So what you're looking at here is uh, progress over time. Each one of these dots is what you have to show for the end of a, a day or the end of a week. So in other words, if you have a, a poor week or a poor day in terms of your productivity, the dot's going to be relatively low. If you are achieving more, the dot is going to be relatively high. So obviously, things are, are never perfect, seamless. I've got great weeks. I have sometimes slower weeks where I'm not getting a lot done. We're all human beings. Things happen. But what what is most important when we look at our progress is the average over time. So think about like a rolling 30, 60, 90 days. That's what we want to be looking at. Some of the dots are going to be higher. Some of them are going to be lower. And what I want to help you to do through this training and, and through this exercise is think about with intention more proactively how you can influence these dots by expanding and accelerating your, your rate of progress because this is ultimately what we're looking at after a month, after a quarter, after a year. What do you have to show for it? So each of these vertical steps, that's your progress. That's how far you're moving forward. So really at the end of the, the day, this exercise is really about influencing your rate of progress. Okay, so the last concept I want to walk through with you before we jump into the exercise is something known as asymmetric return on investment. And I want you to start looking at how you spend your time, where you focus your energy and your resources and your attention um, as a function of inputs and outputs. And if we look at these two shapes... Think of the left-hand side as where you're putting your time, your energy, your focus, your resources. And then on the right-hand side, this is what you are getting back in return. So we've got the inputs, we have the outputs. Now where obviously we want you to transition over time is to have a higher asymmetric ROI when it comes to your time, your focus, your, your attention, or your resources. Meaning that we want to see a low relative input, so that's the amount of hours you put in with a high relative output. So this is a high bang for your buck pattern. A low bang for your buck pattern are $10 tasks, things that you can and should get off your plate. So you put in a lot of time and effort and energy with not a lot to show for it. So this is asymmetric return on investment. We want you to move in this direction over time. So this is ultimately what we're trying to do. Okay, so back to this worksheet. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click file and make a copy right here so that you can modify this yourself. And you're going to want to look at your average work hours. Um, could be 60, 70. What is it on average? Plug that number in here. So let's say it was uh, 70 hours. 
and you're going to see results generated and hours worked. So out of a 70 hour work week, 14 of those hours are generating roughly, according to Pareto's principle, 80% of your results. Now think of this through the, the lens of, you know, the hammer striking the nail or the golf club striking the golf ball. Um, that analogy in terms of where your where your efforts are going and what you have to show for it. So roughly 14 hours out of a 70-hour work week following Pareto's law generates 80% of the results or the value. Follow that down further, we've got the 64-4 law where 4% of the effort generates 64% of the results. Apply that to a 70-hour work week and we've got three hours generate roughly 64% of your results. Okay, and you can see it plotted out here as well where you can see here's the effort and here's what you get in return. Uh, for your time looking at the 80 20 64 4 and we take it further it's and 51 1 so that's one percent generating 51 percent so you're going to go through this exercise and fill out these numbers and take a look and you're going to want to look at that number that 14 hours in this case if it's 80 hours it's going to be 16 hours and i want you to think through what are the types of things that you're doing to move the needle during those 16 hours on average here we've got some examples working on systems to streamline our operation high value activity right that's a that's a future gift that is going to streamline it's going to help your bottom line it's going to help your team be more efficient effective productive it's going to help out with the client experience things of that nature marketing activities that are generating more opportunities for your sales so for example i'm recording a video right now for you this is a marketing activity um, if you are putting together some sort of a resource that you can share with your list in a way that's going to generate more opportunity for your sales team that's a high leverage high value activity Strategic projects that are moving the needle for your company could be new opportunities that you guys are capitalizing on. Strategic accounts with high value clients. Coaching team members to become, you know, essentially cloning yourself. Your job as you grow your team should be more of a coach so that you can help your team to grow to become future leaders. And solving problems at the root level. Think of root level problem solving as solving a thousand future problems by solving just one problem. If we get it right, we can knock that problem down once and for all. So identify step one, your high value activities. And then we want to look at not just the wasteful activities, but the habits that are, are killing your time and eating up out of those 80 hours. What are the things that you should not be doing? So you can list them out here. And then you have four options that you can uh, take with each of these items here. Number one, you can eliminate, so get it off your plate altogether. We have a couple examples here, wasting time deciding on what to focus on. If you're sitting and spinning your tires for an hour, two hours, not sure what you should be doing, maybe an action could be to plan your tomorrows today, meaning that at the end of the day, you're going to look at your hit list for tomorrow and get it prioritized so that when your feet hit the ground, you're not having to think anymore, decide decisions already been made. That's one thing you can do. Uh, too many non-essential meetings. So if you're sitting in bad meetings in your company, we can eliminate those and the action could be to create a weekly agenda to proactively discuss all priority items so that you guys aren't having meetings after meetings after meetings and spinning your tires in that way. So that's one that we can eliminate. Um, things that we could delegate, daily reporting, if you're having to get in and do some reports, something that could easily be trained or, or handed off to somebody else, um, then this is an example and you can see handoff to Sam. Editing videos, writing copy for websites, managing paid ads, all examples of things that you could outsource. So these things here, if we look at the 80-20 of where your time is going and looking back, remember that asymmetric ROI, return on your time, these are the steps and actions that you can and should be taking in order to generate more leverage during your average day, your average week. So again, you're going to want to list out your high value activities, list out the things that you can get off your plate, and list out the strategies by category here and your next actions. Double click here to add the date. Just double click it in terms of when you want to get this done. And then you have a status to follow these through. Not started, in progress, done. So with that, good luck. Um, it's a really eye-opening exercise. I hope it serves you well. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hey guys, Tim Uchuk here. And I hope you enjoyed the previous training. And if you're looking for more training resources like that one, this is part of our Perfect Week Method Accelerator program where we help... Growth-minded entrepreneurs break through that growth ceiling and shift from phase one to phase two growth within their business. Now, what is the growth ceiling? 
Well, it happens when you reach this threshold of transactions and clients and team members where things start to feel a little bit messy. And if you find yourself spinning your tires 60, 70, 80 hours a week, sitting in endless meetings, fighting fires, babysitting, herding the cats, this might be a sign that you're starting to bump your head against the growth ceiling. What needs to happen here is fundamentally, what got you here is not going to be the same strategy that's going to get you here. So we need to, in many ways, upgrade our vehicle from the horse and buggy to a vehicle that is, is meant and built for scale. So having a system that's able to help you to hire and manage the performance of your team without you having to be the system. So if you're interested in learning more, there should be a button around this video. If you can't find the button, then please visit us over at timuchuk.com to get more details. And from there, you can book a call to learn more about the Perfect Week method, what it's about, and whether it makes sense for you. Other than that, again, hope this was valuable, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.